Hey, it's Zana. Welcome back to Consciously Create. And if you're new here, hi, I'm an independent music artist. I write, record and produce my own music. And I also film four videos a week here on my YouTube. And this series is all about business and branding and marketing and so, so much more. So for this video, we're going to talk all things royalties, copyright, and also split sheets when you collab with other artists, when you collab with producers, when you collab with songwriters or ghostwriters, because I've had so many people ask me about this, but also it's something that I got lost on. And I studied music at a music school. I also studied music at college and I studied music at school. So in college, when I was about how old was I? Oh, I was 16 until I was 18. I had to think about that. So from 16 till I was 18 is when I really started to learn about the music industry and like the business and money side of things. And when I uncovered how certain things worked, I was kind of shocked and confused because the major label artists, especially back in the 90s and the early 2000s when I was growing up, they make it look so effortless and so glamorous and so just incredible and then when you find out how it actually works and all of the fucked up things that go on and everything you realize that it's nothing like what the magazines and the tv shows and stuff portrayed it to be so anyway we're gonna delve into music royalties and copyrights and i have a wonderful little diagram because i feel like trying to explain this can get very confusing and there's a lot of information out there so I want to just go into everything and simplify it as much as possible. So when it comes to copyright and also the royalties because you get the royalties from whichever copyright you own. So we're going to talk about if we start at the top of this diagram, hopefully this is actually going to show it around the right way. I don't know if it will be back to front so we just pray that it's around the right way. But you have the master recording which is the actual song, like it's the recorded version of a song. So if you hear even one of my songs, I was gonna say a random artist, but if you hear one of my songs, the physical recording of my song is the master recording. And then the publishing songwriting is the actual composition of the song. So it's the lyrics, the melody, the beat, and anything else, any samples, anything else that's been added to it, that's the actual publishing, songwriting, copyright. And then the master recording is my version of the track, so my physical recording of the track, which will either go on streaming stores or on CDs or whatever else. But if another artist was to record the composition that I've written, so the lyrics, the melody and the beat, if another artist was to record it, their recorded version of it would be classed as a master. So there would be two masters to the same composition or the same publishing songwriting record, if that makes sense. So they're the two copyrights. So for songwriters, anybody that writes music or produces music, makes music, any musicians, they are likely to own the publishing and songwriting of a record. Because like they're going to own either a percentage of or the entirety of that copyright because they wrote the song and they made the beat, you know? But then the artist, unless they're signed to a major label who would probably own the master. If you're an independent artist, you may decide that you want to own your master and depending on whoever wrote the music, whoever made the song, made the lyrics, you would come up with an agreement with them to own your master or maybe they take a percentage of your master as well. It just depends on what you agree on. But if you're independent, you have more um, power over owning your master whereas when people are signed to major labels especially if they're not known and like their deal is a bit shit the label is most likely going to own the master so when you look at certain big artists they don't if they didn't write the song they didn't make the beat or anything like that they didn't write the lyrics and melody chances are they won't own any of the publishing or songwriting and then if their label also owns the master then they don't own the master either like their recorded version of somebody else's written song if they don't own the master to it then they don't own any part of the song not their recorded version of it and not the original written 
composition of it either, you know? So this is how they end up either going broke or getting stuck in contracts and not owning anything when they leave and stuff like that because they didn't have any copyrights in their contracts. So it's really, really important to understand what these copyrights are so that when you either write contracts when you're collaborating, if you're staying independent, or if you were to sign to any kind of label, it doesn't even have to be a major label, you need to know what you're signing so you need to know what these copyrights are and what they mean. So how you get royalties on these two copyrights is, say your music goes onto stores, like streaming stores, streaming platforms and things like that, you will get royalties for when something is performed, for when something is streamed, for when something is reproduced or copied, all of these different ways, for when something's played in shops and shopping centres, for when something's played on the radio, for when something's um, licensed to be played in like an advert on TV. Anytime that it is played anywhere, both of these copyrights make money from all of these different avenues, which is why you have to make sure that you're signed up to the correct agencies to be able to collect those royalties. So for this songwriter publishing um, royalties, if you own any share of the publishing and songwriting, you need to join the companies that collect that type of royalty. So I just went onto the PRS website so I can be crystal clear with what it is and actually get it accurate. So PRS are performance royalties, MCPS are mechanical royalties, okay? So PRS collect cinema royalties, DJ royalties, live performance royalties, music played in public royalties, online royalties, which also includes streaming, overseas royalties, radio royalties, theatre royalties and TV royalties. And MCPS collect broadcasting royalties, which is radio, general interest audio products royalties, whatever that is, um, general interest audio visual products, music audio products, music audio visual products, online and mobile product royalties. So that's also streaming. So streaming comes under both, which is why you need to join both if you are um, putting your songs on streaming platforms. So in the UK, PRS and MCPS are the companies to join, as well as PPL. Maybe you'd want to join that later on down the line. And if you are in the US, then you would want to join ASCAP or BMI or whichever one of those because they are the same as PRS. They collect all of the public performance royalties. But you'd also, over there, you also need to join another company to get your um, mechanical royalties because they don't collect them. And that's to collect this portion of your royalties. This portion, the master recording, comes from your distribution company. So TuneCore, DistroKid. This side comes from... PRS and MCPS and PPL or ASCAP or whatever it is that you're with. It's just really important to know that these companies collect different types of royalties and depending on what copyrights you own, that's what companies you need to join. And if you own copyrights or percentages of copyrights in both, then you need to join all of these companies because otherwise you're going to be missing out on royalties. Like if you just go with DistroKid, but you also have... Um, some publishing and songwriting royalties, then you're missing out on all of these royalties because you haven't joined the company that's going to collect that share of royalty. So you need to know what copyrights you own so that you know what royalties you're entitled to so then you know which companies you need to join. So I also want to break this down even further because there's another stage to these wonderful copyrights and royalties. So you have publishing and songwriting and I feel like people get confused with what that means and what they are and I also got confused especially when it came to me first releasing music because I was trying to figure this shit out. A publishing company is for the songwriters, it's for them to be able to publish their work and put it out there like they offer them different types of services to get their songs out there to various artists and producers and things to be able to collaborate with and pitch their songs to artists and labels and producers and all of those kind of people. So if the songwriter doesn't have a publishing company, then they also own the 
publishing automatically, which is just like what's happened with me for writing and making my own music. I automatically own my songwriting and my publishing because I am my own publishing company. I don't have one that I work with. I do it all myself. So the songwriter would automatically own both. So you need to think about publishing and songwriting being two separate separate pies because when you input it on PRS you put it as a hundred percent for each one so just using myself as an example on the songs that I've written and produced myself it means I own both the songwriting and the publishing royalties but when it comes to inputting that into PRS what you had have to put is 100% of the publishing and 100% of the songwriting it's not 50 50 it's 100 and 100 so it's almost like they're two separate things or two separate circles like I drew here <laughs> because you're putting, you're adding them up as 100% and not adding them up as 50-50. So in my own situation, when I worked with a producer that um, made the beat for me and then I wrote the lyrics and the melodies, we split the songwriting and publishing 50-50 because we made 50% each of the song. So it made sense to split it 50-50, which I feel like is what legally would happen anyway because there's two people who contributed 50-50 anyway, so it would automatically split the publishing and the songwriting in half each. And then with the master recording, I own my master recording because that's obviously what I wanted and that's what I negotiated with the producer and said like, I want to own my master recording, I'm the one recording it and you're producing it and you're mixing and mastering it for me. So we split the songwriting publishing 50-50 each so half of the publishing each, half of the songwriting each, and then I owned my masters, but I did give him a percentage of royalties for the masters. So I owned the copyright to them, but I gave him a percentage of the master recording royalties. And part of the decision to do that was because I wasn't paying any upfront fees for him to do the production, which a lot of producers obviously charge an upfront fee for you to do it, like studio time and things. But where I was recording it myself, we agreed to just do a royalty split. And I also gave a percentage of royalties for the master recording. So if you're writing songs for other people, you automatically own both. And it's a case of what you decide to sign over to them. The artist, if they're not writing their own songs, they don't own either of these because it's not their song, you know? But what they may own is the master, depending on what you agree, what you come to an agreement with. So if you come to an agreement where they own some of the publishing and songwriting, then it's because you're now actually agreeing to give it to them. You're signing it over to them, but legally you already own it yourself before you sign anything. Once you sign anything, then obviously you've agreed to whatever you've signed. So now we're going to talk about the songwriting royalty because we've covered the difference between the mastering and the songwriter publisher. We've covered the publisher. Now we're going to go to the songwriting royalty copyright and then we'll go to the master recording copyright because <laughs> there's just so many sections so with the songwriting part okay like think about it as a pie and we're dividing the pie so with the publishing it's kind of simple because if you don't have a publishing company then anyone that writes the song gets the publishing however many people write the song it's divided that way but when it comes to the songwriting sometimes there can be more people involved so instead of it just being a producer and one songwriter there might be multiple songwriters especially if you collaborate with other artists so when it comes to this if you think about the lyrics and the melody being one half of the song and the beat or the instrumentation being the other half of the song the producer or whoever makes the instrumentation automatically gets their 50% of the songwriting for making that beat because that's half the song. So whoever that is, whether that's you as an artist or whether that's a separate person, a producer, they get 50% of the songwriting share, okay? 50% of this pie, this circle 
goes to the producer. Then the other 50% of this songwriting is divided between the songwriters that make the lyrics and the melody. So if you're collaborating with multiple artists, 50% here is divided between them. So if there's two artists that are collaborating together and one writes a verse and a chorus and the other one writes a verse and a pre-chorus or something, you may want to divide that 50-50 each. Let me get a pen and halve it. Ah. So 50% goes to the production or to the producer, like for the actual instrumentation. And then the other 50% is divided by all of the songwriters that write the lyrics and the melodies. So if you have two artists doing it, it would be divided in half which means 25 each for those two artists for writing whatever amount of lyrics and melodies each. So if you made the beat and also wrote part of the song, you would get that 50% and that 25, so you would get 75. And then the other artists that featured would only get, would get their 25. And then the publishing would also be divided and you'd probably want to divide it in the same way. Especially if you're your own publishing company, you would probably want to just divide it in the same way so it's nice and simple and less confusing. But if there's more songwriters and more people, then this 50% might get divided again and again by however many people are contributing to the song. I just want to make it clear that it automatically is divided by the producer and the, the lyrics and melodies because a lot of times people want to divide it in weird ass ways when legally it's automatically in half. But of course, nothing is set in stone because it's all about what you agree to in your contracts and split sheets and all of those kind of things. So you may agree with a producer and two artists that you divide it all in a th by a third each. And maybe that's what you want to do to make it even. Like It's whatever you want to agree, but this is just the standard kind of foundation of everything. But of course, everything is up for negotiation. So now the master recording. <laughs> so with the master recording, this is again up for negotiation because everything is. But say you are an artist who writes, records, produces, does everything yourself, you would own your master automatically. You would own your publishing, you would own your songwriting, you would own the whole thing. If you worked with a producer, which is what I've done, as I said earlier, we divided this in half each. So he took his 50% of the songwriting, his 50% of the publishing, and I took my 50% of the songwriting and my 50% of the publishing. And then I owned 100% or own 100% of the master, but I gave him a percentage of royalties. So I, in the contract that we both signed, I own the master recording 100% but he gets a percentage of the royalties from the master. So you can own the copyright and still have somebody else collect royalties and have a percentage of royalties without owning the copyright. So it's about what you put in your contract. You need to pay attention. And when you're writing them yourself, you need to make sure that you cover all three of these things so that it's crystal clear and nobody can get confused by it because you've already agreed to it and spelled it out for everybody, <laughs> including for yourself. So that's what happens if you collaborate. Now, if you collaborate with artists, especially when the collaboration is 50-50 and it's not like it's just for one person's album, like if it's just a collaboration that's for both of you and you're both going to promote it in things, I feel like it's important to also include who's going to promote things so we can get into that afterwards as well. Um, it's important to put that in the contract. But for the master recording, you may want to decide whether you're going to both own the master like maybe you want to split it 50 50 or whether it's just going to be one person that owns it and this is again negotiable but the master recording is the recorded version of the song so if you're both contributing vocals to it like say it's 50 50 where you do half of the song each maybe you'll both want to own half of the master recording each but if you're featuring on somebody else's song 
and they've asked you to join it, maybe you'll be okay with not owning the master and allowing them to own it. Or maybe you'll want a small percentage of the master. Like it's completely up to you both to negotiate and decide. And I think it's also important to know that if you own the master recording, you are in control of what happens to the master recording. So where it gets played, where it gets streamed, who's allowed to use it because it's that recorded version of the song. But also these two um, copyrights have a say as well because they're the ones that wrote the original like the lyrics and the melodies and the beat and everything so all um, parties have to be involved and um, what's it like contacted when a song is licensed to go somewhere like say it's licensed to go on a tv show or something then the copyright owners of all three would need to give permission for the recorded version of the track for the master recording to be used in a TV advert. So another thing that I think is important to include in your contracts is who's going to be responsible for promoting and marketing your project and the music videos as well because when you think about it this is a business it's all about the financial side of everything. So say you have an artist who is going to be using the song and they didn't, maybe they didn't write any of it, maybe they didn't make the beat or anything, somebody else did, but the artist is going to be paying for the promotion, they're going to be paying for the music videos, they're going to be paying for the studio time and paying for all of these things, they're going to be paying for their tour, to go out on tour, paying for the staff, paying for like the lighting, everything to do with all of those things, so they're going to be working the song and pushing it and promoting it and putting their money into that to make it go as far as possible and so that everybody can make a living and earn some money off of this record. So I think it's important to take into consideration who's going to be paying for those things to do those things so that when it comes to negotiating the percentages of copyright, it, it's also taken into consideration how much money each of you are spending on various things. So say there's a... Um, artist collaboration maybe one artist is going to be paying for the music videos paying for the promotion paying for the marketing paying for all of these things and the other artist isn't because it's not on their album or it's not really their main song or whatever the case may be if one person's doing that then I personally would say that they would get a higher percentage of the master recording not the songwriting because that's separate but for the master recording and the master recording royalties I personally feel like if you're doing all of the marketing and all of the pushing of the song then you would get a higher percentage of those royalties and the copyright but again it comes down to negotiation and whatever it is that you agree upon together but I just thought to add that in there because it's very important to take into account how much you're actually spending on all of these things and also a lot of the time um, these expenses are recouped before you pay out certain things but I feel like a lot of that is on a major label because the major label collects all of the money first before they pay the artist. The artist doesn't get paid directly, it goes to the label first because the label owns the master recording. You may have one contract with one artist where the percentages are 50-50, then you may have another contract with another artist where it's 75-25. Like it can be different for each situation because it's about negotiation. So you have to know what you need and what you, like where your standard is in your own personal business with how much you bring to the table. You need to be willing and able to negotiate that and make sure that you get what you're entitled to. But it's really, really essential to have all of this in writing, signed and dealt with before you create any part of the song, before you do anything in terms of collaborating with anyone, make sure that you have an agreement made because people can get really, really funny about money and really funny about contracts. So I just think it's safer for everybody to have this dealt with first so then you can get on to creating and enjoying it because you already know that you don't need to worry about the money because it's already agreed to and signed and dealt with. So I really hope this video was helpful. If you have any more questions or anything you're confused on, definitely comment down below or you can text WhatsApp me or you can DM me on Instagram. All my info is in the description box below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already because I do upload four times a week. If you would like to work with me one-to-one -one on your business, 
business or your branding, your marketing, or anything along those lines, definitely check out the description box below because I do offer one-to-one -one services. And also my crystal healing jewelry is in the description box below as well and everything else about me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.